Roy, very good for you to see us and have a chat to us. We're trying to cover as much of the history of farming in Bampton as we can, yes. going back as, as far as we can, and, and, and one of the best ones was, was Tommy Gowin, because he's 89 years of age, and he actually managed a farm over Ernie Parker, which was probably well before your time. I don't really remember Ernie Parker at mm. all. Down, right down Weald, uh, Corner Farm. No, I can't, so so no, Tommy, I can't, Tommy, can't. Tommy King has filled us in with a lot of information pre the war. And then of course, we've been interviewing people um, uh, since then. And of course, it's been a terrific demise in farming. Farm has really gone downhill fast in that time. And, and we want to try and capture as much as we can, while we can. And one of the people we missed that was of course Arthur Gerrin. Now Arthur, he, he knew so much about the area and he could name every field. Can, on your establishment here, do you know of any fields with their field names? Did you and your dad call them by their names? Oh yes, I know all the, uh, all the names. Do you? Go on then. There's Windmill. That's the one right up by me, I'll top the other yeah. one, yeah. First tail, yeah. then there's Whiskey Butts. Whiskey Butts? Yeah. Which one's that then? The one below the windmill. Right, yeah. And then you've got <coughs> Well Furlong that backs out onto Mount Owen Road. Now tell me, is that a furlong long? Because Col our Collins got one called Clay's Furlong. Yeah. And that's exactly a furlong long. Therefore, every, um, t was it ten, 10 square chain? 10 chain is a furlong there. Yeah. And every every chain you go along is an acre. And is your, is your furlong that, like that? No, it's more than, a, <coughs> more than a furlong long, I'd say. Is it? Yeah, for, for people who, who don't have fair long, it's 220 yards. Yeah, and and a 10 square chain. See, this is another thing. Did Dad ever did Dad ever do any measuring with a chain? Not that I know of, no. It, you, usually people years ago, that, that you, you certainly your surveyors and that, would actually have a chain, wouldn't they? No, I know when they used to get the grants for like, Hedge laying and ditching. Yeah. Then they used to measure it then. And, and with the proper, the old fashioned chain. Yeah. Masterpiece, isn't it? And what? Because that's, that's something that disappeared, isn't it? Because well furlong, uh, when Pecker was, he was down there one year ploughing it. And of course, Pecker had won prizes for ploughing yeah. and that. And he had done his mark outs, so and the father went down to have a look. and. Father said, oh, what's happened there, Pecker? That's not uh, very straight. I said, well, Governor, I started off, I was using an old crow as a marker, and he, he said, the crow must have hopped, no, the crow must have hopped from side to side. What was Pecker's Nelson. proper name? Nelson Bird. Right. No, I never knew that. Pecker's name was Nelson. Yeah. Well, posh, isn't it? Oh, yeah. See, because um, Pecker's children are still in Bampton to this day. Oh, yeah, because Maggie's not Maggie, his I, daughter. I, that's it. And then she got a son called Richard, isn't it? Yeah. Nelson. Plink, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that, was with the, that was with the David Brain Crawler you've had in them days, from yeah, Pecker, huh? Because that's. Uh, what they, people know it as plantation, right? But the, the uh, government drained it in the war, and it was reclaimed because it was marshland. My grandfather sent Pecker down with a crawler and plough, and it didn't want going very well. So Charlie Garlic, that was helping manage it, <laughs> sent him up to Lou Left. My grandfather came back in the afternoon to see how he was getting on. He said, where's Peck? And they said, he's up blue, left it. Grandfather went get, 
back to her and said, you get back down plantation and you're not, you've got to stay there till it's all finished. And Pecker said, I have never saw a soul while I was down there. And Pecker changed the name to uh, Happy Lands and we've always called it Happy Lands. Yeah. So, and that is this side of the brook. Yeah. It's this side of the brook is what you call Happy Lands. Yeah. Fred Hornsby who used to drive for you, he always referred to, to it as Happy Lands. Yeah. And there's Pecker that named it. Yeah. That's lovely, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> anyway, well, we've got welfare along, then we come this week, then we got the big field, 60 acres. Yeah. And then, then you've got 60 acres, you've got this one in front of here called Cottage Lees. Then you've got the next why, why would that be called cottage leave? Any ideas? There's no cottage down there. Well, I suppose it's because it's one From these. these cottages. Yeah, yeah. And then the one, the next one up towards the village is called Longmore. Right. And then over the road, starting coming from the village back this way, you've got uh, the football field and the cricket field. Yeah. And then you've got... Do you still call that the football field? I remember Bampton Payne and when yeah, next to the police still station. Call it, yeah. You still call it the football um, field. Then we've got Cow Lees, that's the one before the woodyard. Yeah. The big field. Cow Lees? Yeah. And then... No, that's an interesting because you've got Cow Lees Corner, which is down Weald. <laughs> Yeah, that's odd, isn't it? Yeah. Then you've done the next one, that big one, that's corn ground. Right. And then you've come straight across the road where it was originally two separate fields like Little and Big Hell, now it's called the, the Hells. Right. Um, <clears throat> Is that H E double L S? Yeah. <laughs> Is it horrible to farm? No, it's quite nice soil. I wonder how it got that name. <coughs> yeah. So what's the one under the cops then that we were interviewing Frank and As little kids, we used to roller skate along the, this road from yeah. the council estate and, and pick flowers. I don't say yeah, silly, blue but... Bells. Yeah, Yeah. But there's a primrose copse and a bluebell copse, and not on your land. No. no. They're both bluebells. So only the bluebell and there's, there's nothing. Well, that cops at the top of plantation actually belongs to well Hook now because right. it did belong was Barlow Warns. Right. Yeah. Um, no, that's only blue. It's on the uh, George Dudley's land. Then it's a big uh, primrose wood. Yes. Also, one over your way, isn't there? Yes, yes, uh, the, the, t the top of the barrow, yeah. behind the barrow there's yeah. a, a primrose fox. Going, going on from that, Roy, dealing, dealing with names, Jan and I have, have sort of been looking at things and a lot of people call this Deanery Farm, but in my book, Deanery Farm is where Mum and Dad lived. Yeah, that's correct, and then you've got the Deanery as well, haven't you, where Miss Pollard lived? Right, yeah. This is officially known as Hobbs Buildings. Buildings, that's what I thought. Because there was a Hobbs that used to farm this years ago. Really? Because what's it? Gra Grandfather took this over in, when was it, 1941. And the rent right. was, was five, £525 a a year, right. and being a state of the farm was in back then, we got the first three years rent free, because <coughs> the tenancy, tenancy then was in the name of my grandfather, father's brother Robert, and father himself, and it was written that Henry John Henry would take the sole tenancy in 1952. Right, yeah. And 
because uh, this used to be a big, uh, a lot of people tried dairy here and there was a big problem with ergot on the land. Right. They kept getting abortions in the herd and that, so they never left. Now that, now that, isn't that interesting, Roy? We, we had contagious abortion uh, in our herd, um, but we know we bought in, we, we bought in four animals from the right honourable T.R. Ponsonby yeah. from out there, found and way there, and that's what put the disease in. But our vet was most concerned that we didn't graze the land next to what you were talking about, what was known as Lou Gorse, yeah. because of stuff in the soil. Because no, once, uh, that's why, well, father never, <coughs> he, he went for all store cattle. He used to buy young stores and fatten them up. But he never, the grass mixture was uh, Timothy, meadow fescue and white clover. He never used to have uh, rye oh, grass for some tracks he yeah. ever got. Yeah, well, I never. So, so are you saying that did this farm produce milk before well, Grandad? Yeah, the people here produced yeah. milk. Yeah. Because when I came here in nineteen forty-three, and this was one of, when I came to talks around the countryside, I usually say there was only one farm out of the thirteen farms in Bampton that didn't produce milk. And that was yes one, yeah. Although Jan and I have been going through it all, and of course um, Arthur Gerrin, he didn't know. Although uh, a relation of his had the Bampton Dairy down Buckingham Road, so so there was there was signs of milking having been done here then. Oh yeah. And then when Grandad came, that was it. Yeah. Just, they just went for store cat on the fat and that. Yeah. So was many store cattle kept here? No, oh, you used to keep about 100, 150. Blimey, really? Oh yeah, they kept well. So how many was employed here then, Roy? Because uh, apart from Fecker, uh, and, and, and then yeah, later on was Fred, Fred Hornsby. There was, oh, I'm trying to think of this Christian. Lots of painting. Of course, the paintings, yeah. Uh, Silly me. Fred Hornsby. Yeah. Pecker Bird. Yeah. Bert Whitlock. Because oh, Bert yeah. used to look after the pigs. Yeah. Down in back. Yeah, because where, where the vicarage is now, that's where you have pigs, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. How did you get away with that? I love a good stinky smell in the middle of Pantum. <laughs> no, man, it's quite funny. You know, no one complained about that, but when when planning permission was put in about converting, you know, not in the houses, uh, there were people going bloody mad about it. Well, I never. So when 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 did you stop doing pigs? Oh, not that long ago then. Not in, not in our terms, like. So that so. You mentioned Charlie Garlic. Yeah. Now, if I remember rightly, Charlie Garlic went on to be Ogilvy's manager, didn't they, at Calais Farm? Ogilvy, I don't know about that. <laughs> There's a, a lovely story. The, the, Gordon Okavy, he was uh, was very posh, but uh, definitely a man of the world. And he wanted to have a piddle in his own yard, yeah. right? So he has a piddle, and suddenly Garlic tried to tell him no. And Gordon Okavy put him straight. He said, this is my yard, Charlie, and if I want a piddle in the middle of the yard, I want a piddle. And with that, he did. <laughs> was Garlic so, his surname, or is that a nickname? No, Charlie no, Garlic. Charlie Garlic. That was my... Grandmother's brother. So related to you then? Hey? 
Charlie Garlic was related to you then? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm proud. And, and he was a manager here? Yes. Because... Oh, no, I've got to work this. When the fuck? Yeah, because fuck. Um, yeah, the world fuck. When the father was up over in the war and that, he, yeah, he he was managing here and also helping at Harn Hill as well. Where's Harn Hill? Near Sawyer and Sister. Right. That, that is another farm owned by the Henleys? Yes. Yeah. Could be good. <laughs> Oh, this, that, this isn't to do with this farm, but it, that's, this is all about, that's father's, that's father's brother there. Right. And that's all about. The farmer experimentation and research has an important role. So what, your dad and his brothers were doing experimenting? Oh, no, no. <coughs> That father was here, that's his brother at home. Oh, I see, yeah. That's, that's a new show, a class combine you love. was always Massey Harris or yeah. Massey Fergie, I always thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Henley fa family then have been in farming. So when Granddad bought this, were you still... There was a farm at Iron Hill then? Oh, yes. Then this? Oh, yeah, because... Uh, Grand... Father took the tenancy under, uh, as I said, it was in his name, Robert's name, and, and Father's John, name yeah. in 1941. Uh, and then there was a clause written that Father would be the sole tenant come 1952. Of this one? Yeah. Yeah. Roy, are you still a tenant, or do you own this now? I'm still a tenant. Mm. Is it church or is it college? Church. Is it church land? Plutton's were all right, but now, now Strutton Parker are the agents. And ah, very good character, it's on films. That's <laughs> 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 right, don't, don't take so, it out, it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> we feel a bit weird. Do you yeah. have anything written into your clause that it can go through so many generations and that's it? Yes, that is, because it's a bit, well, Lisa's not really that, that interested in no. taking it, but see, I don't know how they'd work this one, because, as I say, it was in the name of my grandfather and, like, brother and father. Oh, yeah. Then you. Ah, oh, but then it had worded that father would be the sole tenant come 52. Right. Then me, so whether they call me the third or the second. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, right, I see generations, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how many acres is this farm? 487. So it's quite big then. Yeah. Yeah. We never ascertained it from how big Collins is where it's I think Yes, yes he did. Bob did mention, didn't he, yes. how many acres? It sort of set aside five hundred ish. First mm. it, it's um, Benson does a a good job and yeah. they reckon unless you've uh, got at least about twelve hundred acres, it's um waste of money having all your money tied up in a expensive equipment because yeah. equipment, um, like you're paying the bank so much and that yeah. and you you haven't got the worry of repairs and maintenance and that. So so when did you stop farming yourself and having contractors in? When when did you do that? So that was what, when Fred retired? Yeah. When, when Fred Ormsby, your main tractor driver, yeah. retired, that was it? Yeah. 
Oh, Fred came back for uh, I think a couple of years. And yeah. Well, that's right, did a bit of combine and whatever, yeah, didn't it? Yeah. And then you got rid of combines, tractors. So there's yeah. not a single tractor on this farm. No. And that just goes to show now how, how times have changed. Was there ever horses here? Yes. No, I mean, obviously it was years and years ago, but in your in your dance time I'm, I'm talking about. Did Dad yeah. ever have a carter? No, no. So before, Dad was always tractors? Yeah. Because my thing, my grandfather was one of the first people around the area to have a combine as well. Yeah, because it, you know, it says there, farm experiment and playing an important role. So obviously he was very forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah, did you have a grain dryer here as well? Or? Yeah, Kennedy and Kemp. All oh, right. Well, I still that, but I haven't used it for No. Is that the name of the make of it? Yes, right. Kennedy and Kemp. That was, yeah, that was put in 1941. I suppose stop really. Last time it was used would have been two, yeah, two thousand. Right. They still work then. Yeah, it's still. <coughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's still work today if I want to. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, but one of my first memories of your dad, he, he was he was very kind to kids. He was ever so good to kids. And I remember um, a whole gang of us had, had been to Whitney and caught the train back from Whitney to Bampton Station and were walking from the station. We had a fair old walk, it was a two mile walk. And Dad saw us and picked us up in his car and took us all the way to Bampton, which is very nice. But out on your roadside there, is it still there, like a queer pump thing, have you taken that down? No, what it's still it? there. I what is okay. it? Well, that was um, used to. You drew the cart along the side and turn the. Like okay. there, it's, it's not there now, but there used to be like a cha chain and it would pull like a bucket. It was to take the slurry away from the cattle yard. No! Yeah. Really? Yeah. That, that pump thing that's on the stand, out by the side of the road, was a slurry pump. Yeah. And Unbelievable. Then, then there's a shed around the, the back where they've got a big, big list of pump. You have to prime it and, and there's a big pipe goes, you know, under the road and across the fields. And if you, that, that used to pump it out into the field then. Slurry? From the animals? Yeah. That's unbelievable. Could, could I, um, I was ordinary milking parlour and uh, loose straw bedded area, um, 1970... No, no, up. Up until the 1970s, 1976, I had a new milking parlour put in, and um, soon afterwards, I then had cubicles, and that obviously creates a lot of slurry. And then I had a dig into the job getting modern pumps that were capable of doing this and pumping it right down the fields. And you were doing this in the 1940s. You oh, were no, me. Not, oh, not the. Uh... Lister engine that that would have been probably then about the 1950s. But you were pumping slurry under the road. Yeah. In the 1950s. That's unbelievable. And what, so what was that from? You, your beef animals, or did you have pigs up here as well then? No, the beef animals. <laughs> I find that absolutely incredible. <laughs> you were miles ahead of the time, wasn't it? Right. Now, like me at University Farm, I moved there in 1959, and our sole water supply was the wind pump. We had a windmill the same as yeah. you. Um, and it's like I say about this so-called green thinking about wind for electric. 
and which I think is the biggest waste of money there ever was, because you know as well as what I do, if there's no wind, you don't get any water, and likewise, if there's no wind, you ain't going to get electric either. But did you have a big story? Because you, you have got a big concrete tank or something, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. So you've got, well, you've got your wind pump. reservoir. To, but and how many gallons does that hold? Really? It's fairly deep. And so you're, you're in, is he still working to this day? No, no. He's not. So at one time then, that wind pump filled that reservoir yeah. that's, because it's quite high up, so you've got good water pressure yeah. down here. Yeah, we didn't have that, we had to have a roof. It used to supply the water for all the, the cattle yards and that, um, I don't think it supplied the houses there as well. Didn't it? Because that, all along that side of the road, that was all water mains. Oh, right. 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 So you, you, don't, you don't think that reservoir supplied the house then? No. See how ours did. And then, then of course, because we were producing milk, you had the so-called authorities uh, had to test, you had to have your water tested. To see there's no bugs in it and, and, and so, so I mean, we always passed it, it was the most beautiful water oh, yeah, you ever come across. Oh, I used to drink it. So when did your when did your wind pump cease to produce water? About, what was it, about 1990. Really? So it's been it's, it's, quite a while then, yeah. No, the gales took my yeah, clothes so, off. That's exactly what happened to ours. Of course, it's not cheap to have it repaired. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, is there a lot of wells on this farm? Certainly at Lou, there's umpteen all around the house itself. The farmhouse itself was something like four wells, and then you had the wind pump down the field, which was all properly bricked well, which I would imagine yours is as well, isn't yeah. it? No, there's not many <coughs> wells around the houses and that. One in there. Oh, yes. There's only one out in the garden. Yeah. Does it still work? No, because the greenhouse is on top of it. I just paid for it. Would you have a went down in it with a rotomator? I say we knew the well was there, didn't yeah. we, boy? Yeah. Well, actually, at Lou, after we, we, we came out in 1990, no, 2004, five, 2005, we moved out of the farmhouse, and the people who moved in started to do the garden and um, redirect some drains. And they come across an, a stone as big as this piece here, and underneath there was a well big enough we'd have dropped a mini in it. And I've been walking over that for 40 to 50 years. So that you, you get these things about, and the, the work that our forefathers must have yeah. put into it. And they would put drains deep, Roy, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Well, they well, some of them, they're not so deep across plantation and that. Right. No, because it was swamp, yeah. you say. So when, when were those fields we come up? I, I did loo. I set fire to it once I got torn off by my father. But Lou Gorse Lou was just wild land. Obviously, a plantation was wild land. <coughs> what year did you reclaim the land around plantation then? Well, that was during, that would have been reclaimed in about 1943, somewhere. As part of the war act, yeah. as they called it. Yeah, because the war act, they, <coughs> Did the drainage and that, and they, they put the drains in wrong. And what was it? Instead of oh, the drains taking water away, they, they were bringing it in from the road. See, it, it, even that, Roy, used to employ a lot of Bampton people working on war like Because I remember. Uh, Alice Puttock, as she was known, was our post lady, yeah. wasn't she? And her dad, Mr. Brooks, so it'd be Rosie Brooks's relation, 
he was in charge of one of the gangs of, of the war hag. And the gangs of people, would, would, as part of the, the government food yeah. production, went around doing these things. Obviously, they did your land then. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember it, but several people, they reckon they did um, potato picking for father, but I've never really known potatoes in my lifetime, because on this very heavy clay, yeah. that, it, it's not father, really. Yeah, I, I can't remember that doing potatoes. The only field. There's corn ground over the road, that's quite nice, so we all yeah. No idea who the potato pickers were, to be honest. I always get told off by... Didn't Jean say she did potato picking? I don't know. I know Jean knows a lot about... No, I don't know about the She did choose Jean who? Chance. Well, it used to be known as Jean Oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Yeah, because Maggie Snooks, Pecker's daughter, she's a pick potatoes for us. Oh. And she blames me. She said, I used to drive the tractor, and when she was bent over, throw spuds at her backside, <laughs> right? And it wasn't. It was your husband, Terry, that, that did it. And I'm getting a blame for it, even to this day. Oh, no, it was you, she said. It was you. Funny. So I get to the term and I said, well, I wouldn't miss it now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like living dangerously. <laughs> so so you, you did beef, you did corn. Did you do any of the oddities, like clover seed or anything like that? Uh... No, it was Linseed? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we have. Oh. You've tried linseed? Yeah, but uh, there wasn't really any money in that. I thought the government gave you money to grow it, and if you, whether you grew it or not, no, as long as you planted it, that was it. No such luck then. It wasn't worth doing. No, it was better to grow rape then. Yeah. See, so that's. All seed rape is more of a new thing. Certainly when I was a kid, nobody ever grew it. Yeah. So it's, it's in sort of the 1960s and that, yeah, that that's rape right. is coming. Do you grow much rape here now? About 158. Do you? Yeah. So at the moment you're doing rape, wheat, and barley? Spring barley, yeah. Which <clears throat> next year we have follow the... Uh, Right, with the first week, right, and then the uh, barley will go into rape. Yeah. Uh, so, could, could spring barley is a better one for molting. Molting, yeah. Which is, of course, you bet you're better price. Yeah, the, <coughs> the names are amusing these days because I've got two varieties. Right. Uh, well, the majority of it is in Tipple. Tipple? And the other variety is called Quench. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And those are two barleys that you hope will make a malting sample? Yeah. Hopefully. Tipple Hopefully. and Quench. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and your wheat, is, that's for bread making or... Uh, feed or yeah, for, what are you hoping to do? Uh, no, it's not for milling because, uh, as I said before, um, the problem with air got on. Of it. course, it is, yeah. Mind you, that this year the, the crops are a lot cleaner, but what with black grass, that's one of the yeah. main problems. It is round here, isn't it? Yeah. Black grass is, is, is a weed. And it's Would you explain what black grass is? We know, but other people won't. Well, right. Well, black grass is a voluntary <coughs> weed and it's, uh, it attracts the parasite ergot, which is carried by the weather and the spores, and then it 
<coughs> goes on to the ear, the wheat, and t it turns into little bits of like woody bits. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, if that gets in human consumption, it can turn you mental. Well, I'd like to add some of that. <laughs> No, it is, it, it is, and, and you only want one little piece in and the whole lorry load will be yeah. rejected. Mm. It's, it's so Can it be used for cattle feed if it's rejected for the humans because of the ergot? Yeah, they, they just have to put it over a gravity cleaner because if you have a load rejected, they, um, they'll put it over a gravity feeder, but then they'll probably deduct about anything between seven and twelve pound a ton. Yeah, quite a bit. But yeah. I remember <coughs> one year we were I had twelve lorries go from here to Ducklington Mill right. and every load had gone through all right and they about the eleventh load they um, <coughs> said, oh, there's ergot in this, and the driver rang me up. said, what should I do, Roy? Should I come back to the farm? I said, no, wait on the uh, top of the hill on the Aston Mile. Wait about, I said, because you've been coming backwards and forwards regular. He said, wait about half an hour, then Put it again. take it in again. And they ch check the same load. <laughs> yeah, they so try and put, it proves they try and yeah. pull a fast one. Yeah, it's so naughty. Right, well, same thing happened to a farmer. He was selling malting barley, and the, the driver said, "Oh, this load's been rejected." He said, <coughs> oh, "I'll pay. So you don't come back to the farm. I'll pay you." Bed and breakfast for the night and take it back in for <coughs> first thing in the morning, which he did, and it went straight yeah. through. So wrong, isn't it? Yeah. So wrong. We, we used to, like, like years ago, like you just mentioned Duckington Mill, which was close by, um, and, 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 and also British Beef. Well, whatever it's called now, much meats, yeah. is close by. We had all these things for dispensing, or for selling our goods. I mean, the number of agents that was in the area, you had Harrison Matthews, Jan Jan well, and there was um, Jan and Gale, wasn't it? And then Hint Hintons, was yeah. it was separate at that time. There were so many um, smarts, Clifton's, yeah, smart. that there were so many people in the market trying to buy your grain, right? Nowadays there isn't. How do you manage? Well, it's just like, <coughs> you've got the specialised companies that buy the rate. And, <coughs> and, and is there enough of them to make them fight for it so you, you get a good price, or is it... Oh, yeah, there's still a lot of... A monopoly. You've got, like, Dow... Around here, yeah. so so. Are you are you saying then, Roy, that things haven't altered much in the days of Sid Miller with Hinton and Gale and and, and Harrison Matthew? There still yeah. is a good few about to make it a competitive market. Oh yes, oh, oh that's good to hear. Just a lot of the smaller companies have sort of amalgamated in with the yeah bigger ones. You yourself, Roy, you you grew up on the farm, and then you went you went to university, didn't you? No, no. 
But, 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 what, what? I went to agriculture. Worked out in Canada and Australia. For how long? Well, it was six months in Canada and six months in Australia. It was a good experience for you, then, yeah. wasn't it? So that's so that was on big farms or on animal farms. Grain? Were you on grain still? Uh, no, they were mixed. Uh, mainly the Australian one was. Sheep here, then, Roy? No, no. Why? The main reason on, on this heavy clay brown and that, and you get a lot of trouble with sheep and their feet and that. It yeah. Just to make it hard, or really. Because this land, as you know, once it gets. Oh, yeah, well, wet. absolutely. Yeah. There, and yet, um, I mean, a friend of your dad's um, Cotswold sheep, no, was it Cotswold, was it the, yeah, didn't he? He, he was champ a champion breeder, wasn't yeah. he? But obviously he didn't keep any here then, that was what it was like born. Yeah. Because he had a farm in the back of Lou, which was heavy, so. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very... <laughs> Every Donkey Derby, we get a gentleman, I don't know who tells tales of us, we get a gentleman, a friend of yours, who comes to visit us, visit us because he's the donkey welfare officer. And he checks if a donkey doesn't ride in more than two consecutive races, the weight of the rider, the conditions, if they get water, they get hay. I mean, I know he's only doing his job, but he comes over to me and makes it known who he is and what he is. He said, is Roy Henley down here today? So do you know him? He's somebody you went to college with. A, a, a ginger hair blow. Him and Chad, Chad Truman. Oh, Chad. Yeah. Because uh, you were at, at college with Chad, were you? Yeah, that's right. To ask him his name next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, make sure you come to the Donkey Derby yeah. next year. Well, time. we normally do come to the. Oh. Don't we, Anna? Uh... Yeah, but we met the chap who brings the donkeys here from Western. Yeah. All oh, right. Because Lisa asked, um, she made ask him to bring her her prince, this big donkey she can ride. <laughs> so, pig wise then. Why did you stop doing pigs? Just because of the smell down there? Why didn't you move them up here? No, basically, um... For... ...this accident, he lost a leg and that. Yeah. And we, yeah. we gradually cut them down. We used to then keep... Anyway, he worked here for a while and he looked after the pigs and yeah. then we gradually dwindled it down. Yeah, so really it was losing the staff yeah. that was making it more difficult for you, you couldn't get the staff, that, that ended up with you getting rid of all your tractors and everything yeah. and got tractors in and, and done and dusted. Well, no, it's easy enough. I could have got the stuff. I went working all the figures out on paper by telling you, like, you, you've got to pay their wages all through the winter. And yeah. then, like, the church had given me permission, I can let out the.
lose his leg in a farm accident? No, no, what happened, because he, he, he never used to go off sick and one day he was coming to uh, work and he didn't feel too good and the doctor was called out and that he had a blood clot in his leg. Yeah. And they, uh, he went up to the hospital and they removed the blood clot and it went and turned gangrenous, so he ended up having his... Was he a snooker? No, but... No, good. If I had somebody to my, my father-in-law, he got into a situation where he had a clot on his leg and he was told if he didn't pack up smoking, within five days he could lose his leg. And he packed up smoking and he, he was all right. I've heard of quite a few of them, you know, people that smoked and that sat at the uh, blood clot. Because Bert's, one of Bert's daughters is Sheila Stone. Stone from, from Carterton. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was uh, giving a talk in Carterton WA the other day and, and talking away. Because that was quite a, Bert had quite a few, didn't he? Mrs. Yeah. Preston was a daughter, yeah. wasn't she? Yeah. Pam Preston's mum. Because what's it? His brother used to be the combine driver for Jimmy Watts. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, he'd, I'd say to. Uh, Mr. Watson, he said, how's it yielding? And he said, we're going so many tons to the acre. And Bert said, that's a lo <laughs> load of rubbish. He said, my brother said, he, he has to go around the field about... Toys to get a tank for. <laughs> <laughs> Now, why is it, why is it that farmers are the world's worst at I I exaggerating, aren't they? They can out the side. Remember when I, uh, I was in milk, you know, you talked to the other dairy farmers, right? oh, I'm getting this from so many cows and all the rest of it, you know. It's a load of baloney, isn't it? It's a bit like the fisherman, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, when it got away, you should have seen it. Buys <laughs> the fish somewhere else. It's like when the... When the church and that come out, they say, oh, what's all the yields do you, you get? I say, oh, well, I suppose if you take, you know, on a roll of five, five years, I suppose you could say it how rigid it's out about two and a quarter tonne or so. Yeah. We don't tell them. They done better, was <laughs> And they put your rent up. <laughs> but, I mean, this is hard land. I, I know when um, we moved to, to Lou, um, some, I think it was Pecker said to Dad, ah, he said, that's man's land up there, he says, on that heavy clay. He says, not boys' work, it's man's work. Well, I'll tell you that, you see the spring barley at um, top. Uh, well, that <coughs> they round because they round up all that off, and they just came straight in with the drill and drilled it and that and rolled it, and I was surprised how well that barley mm -hmm. came out. So there again, see Roy, how, how things have changed over the years. Uh, you know, when when we were a lot younger, um, and Fred Osby was one of them, and, and Pecker ploughing for day after day yeah. after day. And yet, if I remember rightly, you were one of the first people who tried direct reseeding. Yeah, we did, because when I had the cattle, we had let them graze it off, spray it off with Gramoxone, and then go straight, straight in and uh, yeah. direct drill. And the same with and same with the grain. Didn't you do some fields where you just chisel plowed and straight in? Yeah. So it's so different. Whereas you know, years ago, every field had to be plowed, didn't it? Yeah. Well, they, they they say still though that you should at least plow it 
every three to four years or you're just going to create a hard pan. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel the same way as, as I would do, Roy, that, that when Pecker and, and Fred were ploughing, they knew each field as a, if, if for want of a better phrase, a personality, each field has its own idiosyncrasies. You've got to plough it a certain way and it will drain. You plough it the other way and it won't drain. All those skills have been lost, haven't they? Yeah. You, you, you get, con I mean, the contract pensions come in. Yeah. They haven't got a clue. No, They're just going to plough up and down and that's it. Because when they came out, I was looking at when they first start, came out, they were plowing this field out, and I thought, looking at we thought, look at that, look. And what's he, and he had the plow set, you know, pretty deep in that. I, I said, come, come off it, you will have to ra raise it. I said, you're bringing up that blooming yeah. yellow clay. Yeah. And you can't, you can't grow on that. No. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's one of those things that the skills have gone that in years ago, you, if you'd have talked to Peggy, and, and I have been talking to Fred before now, because Fred, Fred's dad was the plowman at Woodford's when we took over the land. Yeah. And so Fred was able to relay to Terry, don't plow that field that way, you want to go the other way, and it would drain. And as soon as the field at the back of the cow's nose is at new, there's only about four inches of topsoil. So you don't go in there yeah. at eight inches, yeah. you go in there at four yeah. inches. And all those skills are gone, aren't they? Well, <coughs> there's so many of these, you know, a lot of these contractors, they have these young kids and that, or they're starting, like Steve Benson employs a lot, like that are over here from New Zealand. Oh, really? Yeah, of experience? Yeah. Really? Oh yeah, the New Zealand, South Africa, the Denmark. Oh Lord. So are, are you saying that there's not the English youngsters taking up farming to be able to do that sort of work? Is, is that what you're saying? Well, well, well there's, <coughs> whether Steve gets paid so much for taking them on. Yeah, that's a could be a yeah. like a bit like an international agricultural exchange. Thing. Yeah. Because that's after all, that's what you did when yeah. country came to Australia. Yeah. So did you experience big big tractors and big machinery when you went to Canada? Oh yeah, um, got uh, pictures of what. You Big, like D9 caterpillar with seven, um, <coughs> what's it, seven fourteen foot wide John Deere drills behind. <laughs> you were driving that then? No, he wasn't. Uh -huh. That's what they were using. So how long ago was that? 1972. So that's how it, that is how it's happening over this country now, isn't it? Oh, yeah. in, unless you can do so many acres in an hour, it's not viable. Because uh, they come here, like la <coughs> last year, they never had to dry any of my wheat. Last year I was very lucky that people said, oh, when are your contractors coming in and this and that year? they'd come in and it's off like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that they can pick and choose the right time. When it's yeah. dry, yeah. then hit it and hit it hard. Whereabouts in Australia were you? <coughs> Have you been an animal? I'm a firm believer that, that you either, you're either an animal man in your heart or you're not. Because when, 
my brother Terry and me got on well together. Terry was an animal, and I was the animal, and it it worked well that way. Oh, nice. And what are you? Oh, a lot of people. A lot of people. <coughs> so uh, I'm an animal man because what like, people are always asking me for advice and that, and yeah. I always did well at. Uh, Basically, uh, it, it was lovely to see the cattle and that out in the fields and that, and <laughs> watching the calves grow up and that, yeah. but uh, times have changed. and Because yeah. now, if you have any livestock, you've got like an arm full of paperwork. To we, we were talking to Alan from Simon Collins' came and then, and uh, of course Ron Smith and uh, Simon Collins and they were showing us the paperwork. He, even on the animal side, Robert Smith was showing us loads and loads of forms that each year his artificial spinner has to be tested. Well, what a load of rubbish! If it works one year, it's going to work the next, we couldn't have say. Yeah, it's ours, it's gone mad. So, but then you, you still got paperwork here, haven't you? Oh, yeah. With the yeah, army, but yeah. I've still got a lot of paperwork to do. Oh, yeah, that's all. The paperwork, then. No. And you don't do any spraying, so you're not involved with that. Absolutely amazing. Did, no. are, you, are you on this countryside stewardship thing or not? Yes. You know, on the in the point system. Not really, no, not <laughs> of it. There's probably a load of paperwork there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you get so it's worked out on your like boundary margins for like the hedges. And yeah, so was it six uh, meters away from the hedge? Yeah. You can't plant. Yeah. You can't touch it until July. That's right. It, it probably, yeah, it probably pay us either to have a chat with either our Colin or back to Rob Smith on what mm. what that is because it is a thing where I know farm farmers have this bad name. Oh, we get money for nothing, but if the if the community wants agriculture, wants to see the countryside well kept there's a price to pay yeah but it's like what i always said before we you used to get a grant for doing you know like so much a chain for hedges and so much a chain for ditching well they stopped all that and like look notice the farmers don't do their ditches and hedges as regular as they used to, plus the environmental people don't like you to cut your hedges. That's right, you, you can only barge one side of a ditch yeah. each year, you can't do both sides. And it's the biggest load of rubbish. Out. Would you explain barging a ditch, Don? When, throughout the year, if you take spring, straight away, all the grasses and flowers and that will grow in the hedgerows, in the ditches and on the banks. Now, if the ditch has got water in, obviously nothing's going to grow there until the water's gone. So you get April, May, June, the water's gone and grass and flowers grow in abundance. Now, if nothing is done about that, come October, November, you've got a lot of dead grass that falls down into the ditch and blocks it. Basically, you've got a load of trash in the ditch and the water can't get away. So above you, people are going to get flooded out. So years ago, like Roy's just been saying how many people were employed here. In the winter, you can't get on the land. So in the winter, you gave all these workers uh, a hook and a crook. That's a, a sickle. And you go to a hedge, and usually hazel was the best. So if you've got it grown as a V like that, with it, or as a Y with a stem coming down like that, right? You cut it there, 
and you cut that off there. So, so the, it, sorry, the other way around. You cut it. You've got a, the length there and the Y there. So you'd have that the strongest one, and you cut that off there, so that that would act as a crook. So you would then, in one hand, you would, in, in, if you were right-handed like me, you would have this crook, which is basically like a walking stick, yeah. and you'd pull the grass out of the ditch, and you'd chop it off with a sickle, and you'd put it on the bank. And that way you would go all the way down, and this would keep all the farm workers employed throughout the winter, barging the ditches. But the In so doing, by cleaning out the ditches, uh, you are going to interfere with wildlife, which once again is a load of rubbish because you do not do it in the summer. You, how, how can you put a tractor on your growing crop? You're not, you're not going to no. do it, Roy. No. So you're going to wait till the crops are off. So you're talking about September, October, November, December. And that's when you go along. And, and to be honest, all the wildlife has gone deeper, have made their holes and gone deeper in the hedges. So you go down, literally barging the ditches, taking all this stuff off and saying, no, today it's done mechanically. Big story that, that I thought it was Packer, that he was in a ditch on, on the hill there and a yank come along in a big posh car and said, say, Sonny, really talking down to Packer, say, Sonny, he said, can you tell me the way to Swindon? Pecker looked and he wasn't too pleased with the attitude. He said, well, he said, if you turn left on the road there, that's Station Road, he said, and that take you into Bampton. He said, when you get into Bampton, he said, if you turn left in Bampton, he said, you go to the end of the 30 mile hour speed limit in Bampton and take a left there. He said, I'll take you along Mount, Rowan, Mount Owen Road. He said, when you come to a T at, at the end of Mount Owen Road, turn left. He said, you come to another turn and left. He said, and then that, that's the Swindon Road. Well, of course, the Yank does all this. He's coming back past Pecker. <laughs> and he got out. He swore it, Pecker. You bloody stupid nincompoop. And Pecker said, Governor, he said, I might be a nincompoop. He said, but I'll tell you something. He said, I ain't lost. But yeah, I know. Seriously, seriously all the, all these things. No, there was a lot of people employed on the farms, and they were always busy. I mean, yeah. e even ditching, even ditching. Nowadays, if a ditch has been, I mean, you, you had the same because Fred used to have the a little ditcher on the back of the yeah. ferry. He used to all, do all these ditches down here, and when Fred did it mechanically, he put his bucket in, pulled it out, and put it onto the bank. But when Pecker was doing it by hand, he dug the soil and he put it round the roots of the hedge, which of course was beneficial to the hedge and it kept the, there was no gap where animals could get under. So I'm just <coughs> another thing on about like, um, it's like when we, they used to have the cattle in there and like you have this labour, well, there'd maybe be two or three of you forking down onto the trailer and then taking it out them and sh and you there was say three or four of you and you would maybe have a cigarette and a chat and that and have a good laugh whereas today you've got one chat with a tractor with a trailer and a big loader you know he loads it up and just and yeah. no one, no one to talk. They reckon, even though work's got a lot easier than it used to be back in those days, people were a lot happier mm. back then. And there's a lot of these jobs you're on your own all day, and mm. that's what causes a lot of the stress people suffer from today. Well, we were having this discussion with, with Rob Smith the other day. He's driving around on a tractor, I think he said, with something like £80,000 worth of tractor. Well, if you work out £80,000 worth of tractor, 
would employ quite a few men for a, for a long time. Oh, yeah. So are we any farther forward? Hmm. You know, is yeah. it? Well, they, they do say that the one the high the one industry uh, that has the highest suicide rates is indeed farming because of the loneliness. Exactly, yeah. exactly what you just said, Roy. Because see, Steve Benson like his combines and that you're talking are the cheapest ones of at least quarter of a million pounds. Mm. You see, that's a lot of money to have. For what six weeks we're yeah. getting most. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame it's gone the gone the way it has because as you say, it was a part of the community. You know, yeah. Pecker and all them would get down in the pubs there and, and our lot would get down and you'd start your your banter off about you know, one of the worst <laughs> one of the one of the worst things and Fred and and, and um, Packer, our, our Terry suffered a lot from when we bought University Farm because when you're drilling on a hill, right, you haven't a clue. You know you're going wheel, wheel mark to wheel mark, right, and you think you've done it perfectly. When that corn grows and it's on a hill, the whole world driving up Lou Hill can see whether you went a little bit wide at one stage. <laughs> and you'll get your leg pulled something kind of, well, what happened there then? Fall asleep? Yeah. <laughs> All that banter's gone. It was so much part of raw life. Mm. Yeah, because they always used to, I mean, there'd be Fred, Boxer, Painting, and Pecker, they'd go down to the pub, pub and then they'd, they'd push right up here and they'd, they'd be chatting away, and then Boxer would say, Well, oh, where's Pecker got to and they'd look round and of course Pecker ended up in the front <laughs> ditch. <laughs> yeah, we used to have that with Tom Haig who used to help us out a bit. <laughs> he liked his drink and went off and fell off his bike and go and pick him up from somewhere. But it was, ah, it's such a lovely way of life and we've lost it. Yeah, it's, would, would you have Turn the clock right back, Roy. Would you have done farming then? I did, you know, if you lived your life again, would you go, still go into farming? When you were you know, in, in college, do you regret the move you've done or not? Oh, no, I don't regret it. I mean, I think I probably wish that father might have tried to bought the farm back years ago. But did did it come on the market but did he have the chance ever or not? Well I think he could have had the chance, like of course when I when I applied about buying it they wanted about the time where it wasn't paying landlords to own land. Certainly, uh, and, and so landlords couldn't wait uh, until the tenant died, like Jimmy Watts. Yeah. As soon as Jimmy Watts died or so, he died, didn't he? Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. yeah Jim, no, Jim, no, Jimmy. 92, I think. That's yeah. right. So he died. So that farm at Lou was on the market straight away. Yeah. And, and, and the one at Blackburn, with us, 1959, George Woodford had reached 80 years of age. And he said, I've had enough, I <laughs> think so, at 80 years of age. He got out. Immediately, Christchurch sold it. Yeah. Put it on the market straight away. So there was a period of time when a lot of these colleges, I don't know about the church, because the church, was, was Jimmy's church land? No, he was. It was a college, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So the the, the church Same is top. is the richest landlord in the in the UK. Yeah. So whether they would, would have sold off, I don't know. Because I think potentially when 
você. We're looking for more land than yeah. That's why I'm trying to stay here as long. Yeah, you can, yeah. See if the church would offer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, when when you you wouldn't believe this, Roy, but when Dad bought University Farm, they thought he was absolutely stupid, paying such ridiculous money for a heavy land, which, as you know, is what yeah. news all about. And he. out there you know and that, so that would have been the right time if church commissioner had given dad the chance yeah. but my guess is the church would hang on oh yeah that thing they realise there's quite a bit of potential yeah. of this around here yeah see this is they farm what's it it's called the Falcons fat sort yeah, of great, yeah. uh, basically this farm's out on its own, all their other farms are all around uh, Langford, Darford and What the church land? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, it's There's much better sort of than it as well right there. I know some of, I think some of Bill Barnet, so I think some of his might be church. church yeah. So when so did did Dad own the deanery farm then? So that when Dad died, that was sold, or or did the church sell it, or yeah, what? oh far no that we moved out. When was it? About nineteen. 84 I think I moved because when I took the tenancy over they gave me the choice of either staying down in, in the village family house, yeah. or they convert this these two cottages into one oh, I well, see, at yeah. the time I had all my single suckling cows and Cars and when I was down there, I of course had to keep driving up yeah, here, yeah. you know, keep a. So I thought, well, it's easier if I move up here and I right hang the doorstep. Yeah. Yeah. And they sold it. So the church sold it? Yeah. Yeah. Because Father then moved into. They were in White House. I think we've done that. Thank you. I, th I, th I think so, right? Yeah. Thank you ever so much for taking the time out and spending it. I know Jan's going to take a few photographs of some of the documents you've got, because this, this helps, uh, you know, when, when well, people fact, listen to the talk. Well, 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 you've got, well, you found this, because, uh, all right, I'll ask you a question before I... <laughs> How many years ago do you reckon Marjorie Pollard died? Oh, that's a good one. I went to her funeral. Probably about 1973. I would put a bit later, 78. She died on March the 21st, 1982. Gosh, we both are well out. A, lo a lovely story of Marjorie Pollard. And I'm proud. After I sold up farming and I went taxi driving, I took a group of Americans to a prehistoric place like the um, the Rollwright Stones mm -hmm. and and um, um, the ones at Avery. Right down in Somerset, there was a load of the, there's a load of these stones, and these Americans might have been on that. So I drove there, let them go and 
visit this site. And I'm sat in the car and, and went for a little bit of a walk. I was in a housing estate. There was an old lady sat on the wall, so I went and had a chat to her. And it turned out she played hockey with my dream ball. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Save hands on the land. When was that printed? Is there a date on it? Yeah. It's 9D, not 9P. So, so that puts it back before 1970s. Not one of the tractors got a cab on it or a roll bar. <laughs> Walk, walk in the bull out. Always warn strangers approaching horses. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, health and safety was about then, bless them. <laughs> Is that a sale news? It's like a sign we used to put on our fields, Roy, when we had cow cabbages in the field. We put a sign on the gate saying, if you think you can cross this field in four minutes, don't, because our ball does it in three. <laughs> Was that Banbury Stockyard? Yeah. In the days of Banbury Market? Hey. Were you a market man? Oh, yeah. You'd like to go to my city. So good if you had the top price for an animal, um, then uh, you know, it, was, it was listed sort of thing. Church Commissioners for England, Tenants' Dinner. Beautiful place. Bishop of Worcester. Um, oh. oh, is that your dad? That's wonderful. Big boy wasn't soldiers billeted in Deanery Farm. Because I remember VE night, mm. or VE day, going, coming down to that area and, and there was loads and loads of army people in that, in that area of Deanery Farm. Weren't there land army girls yeah. in Deanery yeah, Farm? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you both very, very much. I know. Lovely. And John will let you have a copy of oh, the... Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I'd love